ORMs or object relational mappers have been dominating the data layer for years and for very good reason. These days, every language has access to tons of different ORMs, tons of different ways to interface with the database, and there have never been more options on how you want to go about it. In TypeScript, we have some of the battle tested tried and true methods. We've got Prisma, which many people self included consider to be the goat. And then we've got some of the new cool options like Drizzle and stuff like that. Then in the Go world, we've got Gorm, we've got and tons of other things coming up and tons of other things in between. So there's really a million ways you can do this and a ton of different ways you can handle ORMs. I'm not gonna be comparing ORMs here. If, if that's something you're interested in, please let me know. I will probably make a video on that soon. But for today, I just wanna talk about really raw SQL versus having an ORM and the big differences between the two and why you might wanna use one or the other. This is gonna be part of the long ongoing series I've been doing of building out an app with SvelteKit for the front end and Golang for the back end. I think these two are an awesome pair, so you wanna see more content on that. Make sure you hit subscribe, turn on the notifications, and if you wanna see what we've done so far, you can go back and watch these. We will hopefully be working on a slightly more consistent upload schedule, but I can't make any promises. Well, well, the consistent, uh, yeah. Okay, so with all that out of the way, let's get into what an ORM is and why you might wanna use it. For this video, we're gonna be using Ent as our example of an ORM. This is also the ORM that we're gonna be using in the series going forward, and we're gonna be using that in the next video to implement the CRUD roots for our backend. For those who aren't aware, what is an ORM? Generally speaking, what an ORM is, it's a way for us to interface with our database. Typically, the interfacing layer between you and your database is SQL. Now, you can obviously, if you're using a different database technology like MongoDB, it might be a little different, but I personally have been moving much more towards SQL for vast, the vast majority of things lately, as I've been getting better at it and I've been enjoying it more, I've been pushing more into the SQL world. So, typically speaking, an ORM is gonna be a way for us to interface with our SQL database, but it's gonna give us access to things that we wouldn't normally get like type safety. It's gonna allow us to access it instead of writing select statements or insert statements, we can then call generated functions from our ORM. And it'll also typically give us a way to manage the schema of our database. It gives us this type safe way of building out a schema, then migrating our database and doing all that stuff. You've already used Prisma before. I think that's the most common one. You get that schema.prisma file and in there you can manage everything about your databases structure. You can set up your tables, set up your relations, and then Prisma itself will actually help you migrate and manage your database schema. Most ORMs will give you access to all of that. Ent is no different. You can see in here, they will give you access to migrations, all that stuff. This is not an ORM tutorial, but rather we're just going to be talking about the general concepts. So that's what an ORM does. So let's look at what the code for that might even look like. So for this example, I've created a really basic SQLite database. Um, we'll talk about SQLite in another video, but it's basically just a file stored on my computer that works like a normal SQL database. It's super useful and super helpful for development and even small scale production. So what we're gonna be doing in here is I've created this database, which has two tables in it. It's got a to-dos table and a categories table. Nothing too special in it. The biggest thing of note to see in here is that the to-dos table has a foreign key on it towards the categories. So the categories can have many to do. So we have a one to many relationship. And what ORMs will allow us to do is they give us a really convenient and easy way to both express this and handle this. So with all this data, let's look at the code. Going over into this go ent example, which I wrote out, ent is the freight is the ORM that we're using, like I said. So what we can do in here when we generate our project, this ent directory will generate all of this different stuff. A very common thing you're gonna get with ORMs, especially the more traditional ones like Prisma, is you're gonna need a lot of code gen because what they have to do is they'll take your schema and then they have to generate all these functions on it to actually allow you to run your CRUD operations on it. So for example, this one right here, the schema directory is the one that I actually mess with. So within here, within the category, it creates this uh, ent schema, I define what my fields are, I define what my edges are, which is just their fancy way of saying relations effectively. So this edge dot two to do's means that the category is going to have to do's, it's a one to many. And then what this will do for me is it will generate all of the different methods in here. So I didn't create this category create.go function. This was generated by Ent, and under the hood, Prisma does something very similar. That's why you're gonna get this giant bundle of generated TypeScript and all this stuff. And I think that they even have like a Rust binary in there. Fact check me in the comments if that's wrong, but I believe I'm just going by road. I think that's what it is. So it generates all this code for you. And then with this code, you can actually interface with your database. So let's look at what we've got here. Within the category, we've got 
types in here. We've defined a name, create it at, update it at. And we've also defined a relation to our to-dos. And within our to-dos, we've defined a title, description, create it at, update it at. Nothing too crazy here, but this is a single source of truth for our database schema. And I cr can run all of my migrations from here. So with all this generated, now the way I interface with my database gets really easy and simple. We'll go into our DB test file here. So I'm actually using test cases to illustrate this because I think it actually ended up making a lot of sense here. So I have a couple different functions. First and foremost, I have the test create database. So what this will do right here is it'll seed the data, it'll create the database and ensure that it's migrated up to date with my schema. So down here, we're gonna create a brand new to-do. We can set the fields, do all this stuff. And the important thing that we get here is we get type safety. So right here, you can see this new to-do we created. This has, this is a to-do. So the benefit of this is we get type safety out of our database. This is a super, super valuable thing and makes it a lot easier to work with a database because typically what you would have to do if you just did raw SQL, you would just have to come up with the types yourself and then mix them on and cast them onto what you get out of the database yourself. And to illustrate that I have over here within the basic test right here, this is a little example of what raw SQL would look like. So right here, we get this select ID and title from to do's. And then down here, we execute that query against our SQLite database. And then we go through and we can scan out of that and pull all this out. So this is much not nearly as simple and easy as the other one is. And it also is much more, it's much more error prone and it's much more difficult to scale up because here we only have two fields. So it's kind of okay. We just have ID and title, but what would happen if we had 50 different fields or we had, I mean, that might be a little overkill, but you know, in the real world it's very common to have 10, 15 fields in a database table or 10 to 15 columns in a table. So we would have to either select all of these or we would have to, yeah, either write out selecting all of these or select star from the table, whatever we wanna do. And then we have to query that. And then we have to read all that out here and run scan. There are ways around this, of course, and people smarter than me have come up with better ways of doing this. But, you know, the general concept is if you're just writing raw SQL, you're gonna have to do a lot of this by hand versus with an ORM, it'll handle most of this for you. Here, when I'm going through and I'm fetching the to do's and stuff out of the database, all I have to do is just do client.category.query and then I just get my categories and the categories are an array of categories as you would expect them. I don't have to worry about scanning. I don't have to worry about a next pointer or not a pointer, but a next function call and all this different stuff. It just makes your life a lot easier and a lot quicker. So that's the general reason why people will use an ORM because it will speed up your development and it will reduce a lot of the errors you're gonna make. People will tell you that types aren't important because just make sure that you write it right and then it won't be a problem. But in the real world, especially when you scale up and when you have different devs working on a project, it gets really hard to keep track in your head of what's actually happening within a database and what actually all the fields are. It's a very, it would be a very understandable and simple mistake to look at this database table and think, okay, maybe this description has a capital D in it instead of a lowercase d, or we think it's DESC instead of just full description. A lot of these things can happen very easily. And when we have to hand write all this out, it gets a lot slower when we have to go check against the schema of a database every time we want to write a query. And while the counter argument to that is, of course, you can get a lot more control when you actually run the queries yourself and write the SQL yourself. And this is the one that you're going to hear a lot of times when people tell you, hey, you should just never use an ORM. You should always write raw SQL. What they're going to tell you is you don't know what an ORM is going to be doing under the hood, especially when it comes to joins and relations. So here we have a basic relation of a one to many of our uh, categories to to do's. So when we make a query from our ORM that includes the relational data, we're not writing the join ourselves. So we don't know exactly how it's executing that query. Now, more than likely, if it's a large ORM that's been well tested, it's almost certainly gonna be a very good implementation is probably gonna be very performant and correct. I'm not gonna sit here and pretend that Prisma is gonna have a less efficient join than I'm gonna have, because more than likely they will have a better join than me. But when you get super complicated and you get into super weird places, it does end up becoming more of a pain. And also a big thing to think about that I have sort of noticed doing some more data-driven stuff in projects that I work on like Insider Viz is um, having to go through and like write out this schema and manage the schema between different projects can get to be kind of annoying. And there is something really nice about going through and just opening up a terminal and or opening up a shell and just doing raw SQL against your database. And I think personally for me, one of the biggest arguments against using an ORM, at least when you're learning, is that 
you don't learn enough about SQL. And this is something that I suffered from and I really have had to course correct on over the past few months is as I was learning and getting better at this, I was always using ORMs. I was crutching on Prisma really, really hard. I got, I am very, very good with Prisma and I'm super comfortable navigating between tables and relations and joins and all this stuff on Prisma but I can't do that stuff super well with just raw SQL. If you asked me to write a join, I couldn't do it off the top of my head. I mean, I know it's something like, you know, select X, Y from table, join, like left join. I don't know. I don't know all of it off the top of my head. If you had looked it up, I could figure it out. But, you know, you probably want to be able to understand that stuff and being able to understand SQL and understand your database at a fundamental level will make you a much better developer. So I think that's one of the biggest problems you run into with ORMs is an over-reliance on them. So I think there's this sort of balance of you want to get better at SQL, but if you're actually writing an app, especially something that other people are going to work on and it's going to grow, you want to be using an ORM. It's such a foot gun to be dealing with this everywhere. And this is so error prone. You could screw this up so easily and imagine this spreads out to 10 different entries. I mean, look at this example right here. This is from the fiber auth server that we wrote for this exact project. And I'm using raw Postgres right here. And just look at this query right here. I'm selecting ID, first name, last name, email, password, etc. from here. And then I'm scanning them into this. So I'm scanning the ID, then the first name, then the last name. That is so incredibly error prone. That could get screwed up so fast, so easy. It'd be so easy for me to accidentally do last name, then first name, or accidentally do email and then first name and then last name, or put the wrong thing in or the wrong data type. You can get so bad so fast. And I know that there are ways to make this better. And obviously people smarter than me will do it in a more clever way. But you know, when you get down to the root level of it, this is the root level. This is what the raw SQL package will give you in Go. So you're going to have to deal with this in some way. The scan function is inevitable. It's being called somewhere. It's just a question of who's calling it. So all of these things are, these are all things that you have to take into account. But I hope the thing that you get out of this is that ORMs will make your life a lot easier. They will make your development a lot faster and they will make your development, generally speaking, a lot better because you're going to make a lot less of these sort of silly mistakes of writing your SQL statement wrong. But don't forget the SQL. The SQL matters and you should understand the SQL and you should understand your database. It'll make you a better dev. It'll make you more efficient. And I hope you got something out of this. I'll hopefully have the next part of the series out very soon. If you enjoyed it, make sure you like, subscribe, watch the next video that it pops up here and have a great day.